Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The COVID-19 pandemic has had an unprecedented impact on global travel and migration. Canada's immigration system came to a grinding halt. Families awaiting reunification, as well as workers, students, caregivers, and refugees alike are all deeply impacted. My office continues to hear from an increasing number of frustrated PR applicants who have been in limbo for months with their applications marked as, quote, complete, but still processing and awaiting finalization. These applications have far exceeded the expected processing time. To make matters worse, many of their supporting documents, such as medicals, have expired as a direct result of the delays. Similarly, prospective Canadians who have gone through the full process of having their PR application approved are prevented from coming to Canada because their previously approved certificate of permanent residence are also expiring and they find themselves without a home in their country of origin and unable to make a new one one in Canada. The Deputy Minister of Immigration advised committee members that the department is undertaking a process of individually reaching out to each person whose COPR has expired and asking if they're still interested in coming to Canada before taking next steps to renew their COPR. She herself indicated that this is, quote, labor intensive. Instead of reprocessing applications that have already gone through all the steps of being approved for PR, I'm calling on the government to automatically renew and honor COPRs that have expired. I'm further urging the government to take the unprecedented step to automatically renew or extend the deadline for other documents that may have expired over the course of the pandemic. As well, the travel restrictions for COPRs issued after March 18, 2020 needs to be removed so that people can get on with coming to Canada to put down their roots. This would not only reduce the frustrations and uncertainty experienced by the applicants, it would also decrease the demand on IRCC, allowing for IRCC resources to be better used on other application streams struggling with processing delays. Other immigration streams, such as migrant students, workers, are also being punished through no fault of their own. As their work or student permits expire, many find themselves out of status. For workers with an employer-specific work permit, they are particularly hard hit. Immigration status precarity makes workers more vulnerable to abuse and exploitation. For caregivers, for example, due to COVID, many are now required to work and live in their employer's home. This isolation elevates the risks of abuse experienced by caregivers. I've talked to caregivers who were infected by, by COVID by their employer without the employer even informing them that they were COVID positive. One caregiver was even fired after she got COVID from her employer. Some have lost their jobs because the employers are also input, impacted by the loss of income. Their interrupted time in the caregiver's employment penalizes caregivers in their eligibility to meet the two-year work requirement in order to apply for PR and to reunite with their families. With the delays, they risk having their children age out, which means they cannot be part of the PR application. Action needs to be taken to honor the work of caregivers. They all deserve lander status now. On processing delays for caregivers, it's startling to learn that caregivers' PR applications went from nearly 2,000 in January alone down to only a scant a total of six in, since March. It means that thousands of applications are sitting in the mail rooms and gathering dust. There's also, this is also a tenfold increase from 38 days in February 2020 to 344 days in January 2021 for caregivers to just get an acknowledgement of receipt for their PR application. This further reinforces the fact that processing caregiver applications are not a priority for the government. This needs to be dealt with. And note that when interim programs were closed, there was a stark reduction in caregiver applications. The barriers for caregivers to meet the eligibility criteria are significant, and it is time for change. We need to step up and do better. The Honourable Parliament Secretary to the Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. 
Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, for the chance to address the question from the Honourable Member. And, and let me say to begin that as the newly appointed Parliamentary Secretary for Immigration, uh, Refugees and Citizenship, I very much look forward to working with the Honourable Member uh, in the coming weeks and months. Mr. Speaker, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a challenging time for everyone. Uh, to protect the health and safety of Canadians, Canada has had to take necessary measures which have had an effect on immigration. But in terms of restoring operations and increasing application processing capacity, we've made significant significant gains since last spring. In fact, IRCC has introduced measures to support the processing of permanent resident applications, including spouse or common law partner sponsorship applications, and is providing applicants additional time to provide documents. Family reunification continues to be a priority for this government. It's key to Canada's future, and we know that, especially as we work to recover from COVID-19. It is important, Mr. Speaker, for families to be together in this difficult time, and we are reuniting families by allocating additional resources, streamlining our processes, and moving paper applications to digital. Last year, we introduced a pilot project aimed at digitizing spousal applications, which will allow officers in Canada and abroad to remotely process spousal applications faster and more efficiently. Just last month, we expanded our case processing center in Sydney and added 62 new staff who will be primarily assigned to family class applications. In September, to speed up processing and reduce the wait for couples to reunite in Canada, we increased the number of decision makers on spousal applications by 66%. Just going to uh, just ask the uh, Parliament Secretary just to hold for a moment. We uh, seem to have lost his audio. We're going to try and gain that back, and uh, we'll resume uh, his this segment. Can you hear me now, Mr. Speaker? Yes. Yeah, we've got the audio back there now. If, if uh, perhaps he could just pick it up from the last, uh, I would say, three sentences, and uh, okay. we'll carry on, and we won't take away from his time. Uh, the Honourable Thank Parliament you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate that. So to repeat, Mr. Speaker, in September, to speed up processing and reduce the wait for couples to reunite in Canada, we increased the number of decision makers on spousal applications by 66% to reach the goal of nearly 49,000 application decisions by the end of 2020. In fact, no spousal or common law permanent resident application that is in progress will be closed or refused because of document delays resulting from the pandemic related closures. As the honorable member is aware, to better support families in Canada, the government has updated its rules to make it easier for immediate family members of Canadian citizens and permanent residents to travel to Canada while respecting all public health protocols and measures, including Mr. Speaker, quarantine. Immediate family members no longer have to prove they are coming for an essential non-discretionary purpose. Provided they are admissible, people coming to join their immediate family members need only prove that they are staying in the country for at least 15 days and have a valid passport and travel document. Extended family members are eligible to travel to Canada as long as they meet the criteria and get authorization from IRCC. And this includes, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker people in exclusive long-term committed relationships and their dependent children, as well as adult children, grandchildren, and grandparents. There has been extremely high interest in these two family-related exemptions to travel. And in cases where applications are complete, we are not only meeting our 14-day processing service standards, we are exceeding it with 80% of applications processed with, within five business days. And so far, Mr. Speaker, 35,000 extended and 26,000 immediate family applications have been processed. That's over 60,000 families who are together once again. Mr. Speaker, we will continue to find innovative and compassionate ways to reunite families, always informed by the advice of our public health experts who remind us that COVID-19 is still very much a risk to the health and safety of Canadians. And Mr. Speaker, the government has been efficient and nimble in the area of processing and has developed virtual landings, virtual citizenship ceremonies, and is in the first country in the world to offer online citizenship testing. This will serve us well as we continue to welcome newcomers and strengthen Canada through immigration. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Vancouver East.
Congratulations to the parliamentary secretary, and I look forward to working with him. Uh, I have to say, though, for caregivers, as I was mentioning, they deserve lander status now. And to actually create better efficiencies for IRCC, what the government can do to free up resources is to simply automatically renew and provide extensions of current work permits, study permits, visitor, visitors' visas, expired PR documents, expired certificates of PR, and so on. This will save time and resources for IRCC so that they can get on to doing other work that is so urgently needed. The streams that the, at the parliamentary sec secretary talked about in terms of some work being done, I appreciate that. But there is so much work that needs to be done. And the issues that I highlighted earlier are some of those that remain, continue to be outstanding. And finally, on the issue around reunification for family members, I have to say the government should actually suspend uh, Section 179B so that those who want to bring their loved ones here to uh, be with them while their PR application is under process, under the uh, spousal sponsorship application, would be able to do so. I urge the government to take action so that truly we can create a system that meets the needs of the community, allow for loved ones to reunite and ensure that uh, uh, caregivers and temporary foreign workers are treated appropriately and fairly. Honorable Parliament Secretary. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thanks once again, Honorable Colleague. Um, in our operations and processing, we have made significant progress, and we're going to continue, continue to work uh, to serve uh, Canadians and their loved ones who they're trying to reunite with better. Uh, we've introduced measures to streamline processing of permanent resident applications, including spouse or common-law partnership applications, uh, provided applicants additional time to provide documents if need be, uh, if they're faced with challenges due to local COVID-19 restrictions, introduced a pilot to digitize spousal applications so officers in Canada and abroad can process them more remotely and increase the number of decision makers on spousal applications in Canada to reduce couples' wait time. Um, in addition, Mr. Speaker, we've developed virtual landings, citizenship ceremonies, and citizenship testing. We are on track to return to our pre-pandemic processing times and will continue to reunite families based on advice from public health experts. And I look forward to working once again with my honorable colleague to move this forward in the most efficient way possible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.